And this guy said, yeah, but at least when you were a little kid, it was the 50s, and every, everybody knows that nothing happened in the 50s. <laughs> and I got kind of bugged about that. I said, wait a minute, what about, you know, did you ever hear this, the Suez Canal crisis, the, the Korean War, uh, the, the, the uprising in Budapest, and the Hungarian freedom fighters? I started writing this stuff out. <clears throat> and um, it started coming out like a rap song. And that's really what the, um, the, the basis of, of how the song came about. Mm. What sort of reaction do you get from audiences to it, Billy, when you perform it live? Uh, they, uh, they all get up and they start, you know, jumping when we do that song. The funny thing is, I'm looking out there to see if people know the words, because I'm always worried I'm going to forget <laughs> the words. There's always, and there's always a little thing in, in the back of my mind, like, when I'm watching people, they're looking at me, waiting for me to forget. Yeah. Uh, almost like, like people would go to watch the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> you know, they want to see a, they want to see a great race, but in the back there, 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 there may be a crash, yeah. you know? So, and I, I think there's some of that going on in the audience, like, will he crash? Is he going to make it, you know? <laughs> have you forgotten the excitement you, of doing the song. Have you forgotten the words yet? No, not yet. No. Not yet. But the more we talk about it, the more worried I'm going to get about it. I'm probably going to forget him tonight at the concert. <laughs> Billy, how much of a buzz do you get out of performing before those people and having them jumping out of their seats? Well, that's what it's all about, really. Um, I started out playing in clubs, and that's the reason I became a professional musician, my first gig. I was up on stage, and girls wouldn't, really hadn't looked at me before that, and all of a sudden, these women are looking at me, these girls. <laughs> who wouldn't look twice at me. I'm thinking, hey, this is not bad. Yeah. And I'm having fun. And, and at the end of the night, we were playing at some church somewhere. The priest comes over and he gives us five bucks a piece. So that was it. I was hooked. Um, it's a great way to make a living. Um, it's wonderful to have people let you know that you're doing a good job at the end of the night. I mean, how many people finish work and have 20,000 people stand up and give them a hand. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you couldn't you wait know, to I've get... had other jobs. But Billy, do you ever lose concentration on stage? I mean, you've done many concerts, hundreds of them. Do you ever sort of drift off during a song, perhaps <clears throat> find it hard to keep your mind on the job? Yeah, sure. Sure you do. Um, there's some songs we don't do anymore because I got so bored <clears throat> doing the song, I just started thinking of something else. And, I mean, there you are on stage, say it's about 10 o'clock at night, and we'd be in the middle of just the way you are, which I'm so bored of. Mm. Don't go changing, na, na, na. And I'm in the back of my mind, I'm starving. I'm thinking, geez, I, th I think they had a burger on that room service menu. <laughs> Maybe a salad. I don't know. By the time I get back, it's kind of be late. And then I'll completely yeah. forget the words. I, I love you. <laughs> Ma, ba, 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 boo. And the audience goes, <laughs> boo. <laughs> now, Billy, not many performers like yourself have to put up with the audience yelling out, where's your lovely wife? That's okay. I mean, uh, I understand the interest. <laughs> but, you know, we can turn that around. Sometimes there'll be a guy yelling, Yo, where's Christy? And I'll say, well, she's probably back in the hotel room right now wearing something slinky. <laughs> something you'll never see. <laughs> you know. But uh, it's fun. Just uh, finally, Billy, Down Easter Alexa, uh, on the album, uh, a beautiful song that has, it's, to me, and I suppose to most people who hear it, has a lot of feeling in it, but I thought Leningrad uh, was quite moving, probably one of the most moving songs I've ever heard you sing. What's the story behind that? Uh, that's a true story. Uh, we met a fellow when we were in uh, Moscow back in 87, uh, who was a clown in a circus, and um, we got to be pretty close friends. He also came up to Leningrad. Uh, which was difficult to do in those days. It's not that easy to travel even inside the Soviet Union for the citizens there. And uh, I had a difficult time saying goodbye to this guy. He, he became very close to me and my family. And uh, my daughter was just enchanted by him. And as an American going over there, uh, it was a great release for me. It was um, a release from all the you know, Cold War tensions that, we, that I'd always grown up with. Um, and my daughter's response to him was just, just thought he was this very funny guy. And for me, the Cold War ended right then. That was it for the Cold War. And I wanted to write a song about it. And it's all there in that song, Leningrad. That's what it's about. A top performer coming to Australia soon. That's all we have time for this evening. Thanks for your company. Until tomorrow night, good night. <laughs>